Setting up security infrastructure is a big step in protecting your apps and data, but set it and forget it won't fly. Making sure everything is working as expected, identifying attacks and breaches, and fixing issues when it's not working comes next. Welcome back to our Go Deep with Google Cloud Armor series, where we do demonstrations on capabilities and features so you learn what's available, how to use it, and how you can leverage it in your environment. In our previous video, we covered how to configure rules and policies in Google Cloud Armor. Now, we'll demonstrate how to use monitoring and dashboards to ensure your policies are working as intended or to troubleshoot problems. Check out the link in the description to see other videos in our series playlist. Visibility and telemetry is key for any comprehensive application protection solution. Cloud Armor leverages the Google Cloud telemetry tools to deliver this information in near real time. Per request logs are captured and sent to Cloud Logging, containing all decisions that Cloud Armor makes with regards to L7 requests, as well as which rules fired and why. Real-time telemetry for request volumes is available at various levels of granularity through cloud monitoring, including pre-configured dashboards to help you visualize and build alerting policies, custom dashboards using network security policy metrics or log-based metrics, Security Command Center, where correlated security findings about unexpected traffic spikes are sent to trigger investigation and possible incident response workflows. And finally, using Looker to do more powerful dashboarding, which first requires configuring a data sync to export data from Google and integrate it into any of your visualization and dashboarding tools. In this video, we'll cover how to use each of these. Check out the description for the timing of each demo so you can go to whichever one you want at any point. Up first, let's look at using some predefined dashboards in cloud monitoring. To find cloud monitoring in the console, you can go to the left-hand menu under Operations or simply search for it in the search bar. Once in cloud monitoring, again in the left-hand menu of the console, click on Dashboards. Here, you can see that we have all of our dashboards in the Dashboard List tab, and we have a Sample Library tab. From the Sample Library, you can find additional dashboards to add to your list. Under Name, we want to find and click on Network Security Policies. You know it's a predefined dashboard because the type is Google Cloud Platform. When you access the dashboard, you see overall metrics on the right. These include request volume metrics for requests evaluated by a security policy broken down by outcome, allowed, denied, previewed allowed, and previewed denied. Metrics can be observed at varying levels of granularity. On this screen, we see the metrics for the entire project. Getting into the breakdown by policy name or clicking into the policies allows us to see the metrics for a specific policy. Beyond this, we can create custom dashboards. First, we'll take a look at an example of a custom dashboard, and then we'll go into adding additional metrics. I have here a Cloud Armor custom dashboard that we created. You can see that the type is custom. We won't be covering how to create a dashboard in Cloud Monitoring in this video, but see the link in the description for documentation on how to do that. The dashboard we pre-made highlights elements like traffic request volume, HTTP response codes, total requests, traffic by country, and more. You can use the Add Filter button to quickly filter by variables like client country, for example. Select the country you want to look at and we can get a high-level view of the traffic coming from that specific geo. This can be done with any other data point that we have within the log line. Now, let's discuss metrics. Let's first look at the per request logs, get comfortable with them, and then we can come back to how they can be leveraged for monitoring. To demonstrate this, let's hop into Cloud Logging and go to Log Explorer. Google Cloud Armor per request logs are logged as part of logging for external HTTPS, TCP, 
and SSL proxy load balancers. They include information like security policy name, match rule priority, associated action, and other related information. This is where you'd want to look first to see if a particular policy set or single rule is effectively doing what you want it to do. Once these elements are logged by Cloud Armor, they can be turned into custom metrics and be added into a dashboard in Cloud Monitoring. Using logging, you can view every request evaluated by a Google Cloud Armor security policy and the outcome or action taken. For example, to view denied requests, you can use a query in Log Explorer to filter to only logs from Cloud Armor where a request was denied. Cloud Armor logs information about the enforced security policy, name, priority, and configured action. Most importantly, it logs the outcome, which indicates the action taken by Cloud Armor allow, deny, redirect, throttle, or rate based ban. If a policy is configured in preview mode, Cloud Armor also logs the action it would have taken if the rule was enforced. You can set different logging levels to help you evaluate whether your security policies and their rules are working as intended. We recommend that you enable verbose logging when you first create a policy, make changes to a policy, or troubleshoot a policy. This gives you detailed information about why a pre-configured WAF rule was triggered by a particular request, which is extremely useful when rule tuning. You can turn on verbose mode by running the following command in Cloud Shell. In our previous video, we had added a PHP OWASP rule. Let's take a look at what gets logged when verbose method is enabled. As you can see here, you get details about the matched field name, type, and value that will be helpful for you for debugging or rule tuning. Now that we understand Cloud Armor's per request logging, let's get into log base metrics by clicking on it in the left hand pane. Under user defined metrics, we can see the metrics we have already created. Let's click into the three dots menu and click on Edit Metric to see what goes into creating a log base metric. Under Filter Selection, you can see the logs we are using for creating the custom metric. Under Labels, we can see the specific log fields we're extracting to create log base metrics. Let's go back now. We'll click on Discard as we didn't make any changes. Now, we'll review how to add the log base metric to a dashboard. To do this, click into the three dots menu again and select View in Metrics Explorer. Once in Metrics Explorer, Go into the Group By drop-down menu and select the labels that have been logged. Click Save Chart. Edit the name of the chart if you like and select the dashboard to add this metric into. This can be a new dashboard or a previously created one, like the example I showed before. I'll choose to save it into my already created Cloud Armor dashboard. The confirmation pop-up comes up, 
And if I click View Dashboard, we can see that the new metric has been added. So I can quickly zero in and see a summary statement of what is going on with my traffic in Cloud Armor. Now let's briefly touch on monitoring with Security Command Center or SEC. We won't be covering how to use SEC in this video, but since it is a way to monitor when using Cloud Armor, I'd be remiss to not mention it. SCC is the Security and Risk Database for Google Cloud. It includes a risk dashboard and analytic system for surfacing, understanding, and remediating Google Cloud's security and data risks across an organization. It's part of our Security Operations Workflows toolset. Google Cloud Armor is integrated automatically with SCC and exports three findings to the SCC dashboard. Allowed Traffic Spike Finding, aptly named, notifies you of a spike in allowed traffic on a per backend service basis. A finding is generated when there is a sudden increase in the allowed number of requests per second compared to the normal volume observed in recent history. Increasing Deny Ratio Finding notifies you that there is an increase in the ratio of traffic that Google Cloud Armor blocks because of a user configured rule in a security policy. Although the denial is expected and does not affect the backend service, this finding helps alert you to increases in unwanted and potentially malicious traffic targeting your applications. It notifies you that the app may be under attack. The SCC dashboard also contains findings from Cloud Armor's Adaptive Protection feature. Adaptive Protection uses machine learning to help you protect your web applications and services against Layer 7 Distributed Denial of Service DDoS, attacks such as HTTP floods and other high-frequency Layer 7 application-level malicious activity. Links to a video and documentation where you can learn more about Adaptive Protection is in the description. The findings for Adaptive Protection in SCC are located in the Google Cloud Armor card under the Application DDoS Attacks category. Each finding includes the details of the backend service in question, the attack confidence, the signature associated with the attack, these are the details of what was observed and what led to the detection firing, and a link to the specific alert on the Adaptive Protection Dashboard. SCC provides a holistic view of information on various security vulnerabilities for your organization, including some Cloud Armor findings. All right, let's keep going to our next demonstration. Next, I'll demonstrate a more advanced way to create custom reports using Looker. But before we can do that, we first have to create a data sync, and then we'll export the desired log data into BigQuery. This process of creating a data sync and exporting log data is really helpful to master. With it, one can export Cloud Armor findings, or any Google Cloud products findings, from cloud logging to any third party tool that you may want to use, like a SIM or a SOAR. To begin, back in cloud logging under Logs Explorer, Click on More Actions over here and select Create Sync. Name the sync and add a brief description if desired. Click Next. In the Sync Destination panel, select the Sync Service and Destination by using the Select Sync Service menu. If you are routing to a service that is in the same cloud project, you have one of the following options. Cloud Logging Bucket, select or create a logging bucket. BigQuery Table, select or create the particular data set to receive the routed logs. You also have the option to use partition tables. Cloud Storage Bucket, select or create the particular cloud storage bucket to receive the routed logs. Pub Sub Topic, select or create the particular topic to receive the routed logs. Splunk, Select the pub subtopic for your Splunk service. In this case, we'll select our analytics tool BigQuery and then select the BigQuery dataset. You can either create a new one or select an existing one. For this demo, we'll use an existing dataset. 
Now, we can create filters to dictate what we want to have included in the sink and what we want excluded out of it. Click Create Sink, and we can then see back in Logs Router that this sink has been created and can now be used in other parts of the system. Now that we have our data sync set up with our log data flowing into BigQuery, let's use Looker to more deeply analyze our insights and create some custom reports. For this, we'll leverage Looker's ability to directly connect to live data in our BigQuery database and demonstrate some out-of-the-box capabilities Looker has to derive insights from that data. Here is the Looker interface. And to begin, we have to click this button in the upper right-hand corner to go into the Looker marketplace and deploy the Cloud Armor module. Looker calls these modules blocks. There's no additional cost for the Cloud Armor block, and it's very quick and easy to apply into your Looker environment. In the search bar here, I'll type Cloud Armor and install the block. What this block provides is some pre-configured models with the ability to explore and ask questions of the data, as well as some pre-created dashboards to derive immediate insights from the data as well. So if we hop back into Looker and click on the App 1 folder, we can see that the Google Cloud Armor dashboard is now live. Open that up and see it's pre-filtered to App 1. It's showing data for the last seven days, and if we scroll, you can see the different metrics and KPIs that are available. Depending on which of these metrics are most useful to your business, you can take advantage of Looker's alerting capabilities to alert you when something reaches a certain threshold. By clicking the bell icon on this metric, I can create an alert that will notify me or whoever I specify when requests are greater than 70,000. That can be accomplished by email or by a messaging system like Slack at a selected frequency and time and with specific permissions. Click Save Alert, and that is set. Now, let's explore how to create a custom report. A custom report oftentimes begins with a look or a dashboard that is already created, and there's a follow-up question that we want to know the answer to. So in the Cloud Armor dashboard, we can see there is the top request remote IPs look, and we'll use this as our starting point. Click into the three dots menu and click Explore from here. Now we are in the Explore mode, and here we can tweak the look to our liking. Under Filters, I can change this to roll up to the entire business versus just App 1, and change the visualization to a pie chart. In the edit menu, I can further customize this by turning the legend into labels and other cool features. I can now save this under the gear icon as a look. Give it a name, make sure the correct folder is selected, and now this report is available for other users to see in our app one folder under looks. If we want to make this look available to other business units like App 2, click the three dots menu on the look, copy, and select the desired business unit under shared folders. Then click OK. And now if I go into the App 2 folder, the look is available there as well. From here, I can save this look as a new dashboard and we can use it as a starting point to build a new custom dashboard. Click View Dashboard, and my look is there. Now, if I want to continue adding content, I can go back into the Explore mode, select Google Cloud Armor that came with the looker block we installed, and create my own custom look. Let's say we want to see a count of all actions that were triggered. Using the side panel search for enforced security policy configured action, then select count under measures and hit run. Looker then selects the best fit visualization, and I can edit this as I choose. Maybe I want to see it as a bar chart. We can then go deeper and decide to see this trending over time. 
Again, in the side panel, I can type in time and select event timestamp date. It gets added into my table view, and then I can pivot by the configured action. Go back into visualization and make it a filled line chart to see it trending over time, and edit some of the customization options to make it a bit prettier by changing the line interpretation to monotone and stacking the lines. I can now save this the same way I did before and add it to the custom app one dashboard I created earlier. And if I go back to that dashboard, you can see that new content was added. Additionally, the same way I copied the look to another business unit before, I can copy this dashboard to another business unit and provide users from App3 the ability to see this dashboard as well. Now we can start to see some of the more powerful visualization and data analyzing capabilities that Looker offers to derive insights from your data. Now, if I want to deliver this dashboard to end users directly, I can once again in the three dots menu, click get link, copy it and share it that way. Or schedule a delivery by sending this as a PDF or other format to specific stakeholders or an email group. Finally, I'll touch on the fact that Looker's interface allows for localization and accessibility options through the admin panel. So for example, if you have users that speak different languages, you can change that in the localization tab for the entire interface. Or on a per user basis, in the Edit Users section. Select the language under the Locale dropdown, Save, and you can see the left-hand menu has changed to French. So not only is Looker more powerful for analyzing and visualizing, it also offers the huge benefit of sharing insights with other users easily. And that is our last demonstration for the video. As you can see, with Cloud Armor, there are many ways to keep an eye on your data. Now, you should be able to use these options for monitoring and dashboards to have up to the minute notifications of attacks and major shifts in the environment to assist with SRE and SecOps, as well as to extract insights from Cloud Armor. This will give peace of mind that your configured rules and policies are working correctly or help address any issues if they're not. Make sure to check out the links in the description for helpful information. And if you found the demonstrations in this video helpful, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the upcoming videos in the Go Deep with Google Cloud Armor series. Thanks for watching.